Hello and welcome back to MHBC Family Connect, the daily video podcast of Morrison Heights Baptist Church while we're under coronavirus lockdown. It's getting more likes on social media than that time I added management to my skill set on LinkedIn. Our special guest today is Dr. Charles Scrivener. He's my boss. He is the Associate Pastor of Education and everything else here at Morrison Heights. Welcome, Dr. Scrivener. It's great to be here. Thank you. Good to see you. This is the closest we've been in a few weeks because we've been social distancing. So it's exactly. nice to see you again. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, tell us about how things are going with your family. Uh, they're doing well. Uh, my wife is working out of the house as well as out of the office a little bit. Uh, our son, who works at Addie McBride, uh, he teaches uh, Braille individuals, uh, adults. Um, he teaches them primarily communication skills. And uh, he has been sent home, uh, but is getting paid. He's working for the state. And uh, he's doing well, a little bit bored at home. Yeah. And our daughter, uh, she has moved down over the weekend uh, back to Florida. She moved this weekend? She moved this weekend. Ooh, she worked on Thursday in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And she drove all day Friday back down to the Fort Myers area, and she was at work on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, wow. um, straight through. Wow. Pharmacists work hard. Yeah, we need them right now. Yeah. Glad, glad she's working hard. That's good. Uh, so many of the ministries here at Morrison Heights are supervised by yourself, uh, but the senior adults especially look to you as their leader. So uh, what would you say to, us, to senior adults in our church now? continuing to do the great job. Uh, they are ministering to each other very, very well. Um, I've called probably 70 or 80 of our senior adults in the last uh, week and a half, and uh, they are busy caring for one another. Um, usually when I start the conversation, I ask how they're doing, and they say, great, how are you doing? And then secondly, I say, is there anything that you need? And they say, no, I think I've got everything I need. Do you need something? And I say, no, no, but we'd like to bring some items to you if you need them. And uh, they usually say, no, but if you need help, we'll be glad to go get items for somebody else. Yeah. And I try to remind them that they should be staying in as much as possible and not getting out. And uh, they just want to help. They're just a terrific group of folks. Yeah, well, I know it's been very hard on some of them to not be able to serve at Second Harvest recently just because of the coronavirus. Right. Several have mentioned that, and they uh, bemoan the fact that they cannot work at Second Harvest. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of Second Harvest, I have an update for people who have asked about Second Harvest. Several of you have asked, okay, I know Second Harvest needs food right now. What about uh, money? Can I make a financial donation and uh, somebody else purchase the food? Uh, clearly, I mean, money is going to help Second Harvest anytime, but it doesn't immediately help Second Harvest. If you can bring food, I talked to Tim Rowan today. Uh, he suggested uh, one of the places to look for food right now is just the non-traditional sources. Most of us will go to uh, Walmart, Kroger, Costco, or Sam's for food, but you can also look at uh, places like Big Lots or uh, Dollar General, Dollar General yeah. Corner Grocery. Is that the one on North Side? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are places that may have uh, items that are out of stock as some of the more common stores to look to. So that's an update on, on Second Harvest. Um, what else uh, is going on with the senior adults here in the church? Well, a couple of the senior adult life groups are continuing to meet, and they're meeting with Zoom. And uh, they're learning new technology, that's and uh, they're embracing that. Uh, some of our senior adults do not have the ability or they don't have the equipment to do that. Uh, so we are sending CDs, and if there are other senior adults that would like a CD of the Sunday morning services, nice. we would be glad to share that with them, uh, as well as if they need items. We'd be glad to get those items, pick them up at the store, and deliver them to them. Good. That helps. Uh, anything else in the church as far as upcoming activities, changes in plans, or just ministries that you're a part of that we should know about? Right now, everything is suspended. Uh, we hope we'll be able to get back, but we're not sure when we're going to be able to get back uh, together. Um, and so people are, are trying to be patient, and so far they are. I think last week, Tim, uh, a lot of people were sort of in shock. Sure. Uh, everything was so different, and it was so different so quickly. Uh, this week, most people are getting into a new rhythm and uh, are more accepting of what's going on. Yeah. That's good. I saw on Facebook that Ken and Bridget Mraz's sons, uh, Joshua and Scott, they were out passing out water to the waste management 
employees as they were coming through the other day, uh, which is just a fun thing. You know, kids, kids are home that aren't used to being home. And it's good to see the stories of how, how people are connecting with the community. And I, I believe they, they hand sanitized and washed, washed <laughs> those down with Clorox wipes before they handed them out. Whatever. I'm so, sure they did. Uh, so good for them, getting out and helping the community and everybody's finding different ways to serve. Yes. It's fun to see. Uh, let's see if there's anything else church-wise that we need to update folks on. Um, we mentioned... Uh, Second Harvest. What about preschool and after school program? Anything that we need to know about that? Yes, at our old campus, we still have the preschool ministry there and uh, it's going well. Um, we're taking care of about 50 children each day. Uh, those children, their parents are both working. They're not able to take care of their kids at home. They're not able to uh, do social distancing as well as they would like to. And so we uh, made the decision at the very beginning that we would try to keep that open as long as we can. And so far that that's been successful. Uh, some of the workers are not working right now uh, for the Child Development Center, uh, and, and they understand the reason for that. Yeah. Well, it's a blessing to be able to provide that service because as the governor mentioned, it's crucial for people who work in healthcare Absolutely. or indispensable industries. There are many people that don't have another option. So it's a tough decision, I'm sure, to to keep that open, but it's a valuable thing to serve the community in that way. So I right. appreciate it. We had over 250 children that were mm-hmm. enrolled as of two or three weeks ago. Yeah. And so uh, most of them have uh, said that they want a spot held for them, uh, even if they're not able to come right now. Yeah. So we have about 50 out of the 250. Okay, well, good. Uh, you prepared a devotion for us today. You wanna share that with us? Sure. I wanted to talk about attitude. Uh, I know that I have a hard time with my attitude. Uh, Sometimes you do the right thing, but you don't do the right thing with the right attitude. And so I was looking at an example of uh, David in the Bible. Uh, David was anointed as king before he officially became king. It was an unusual situation. Uh, Samuel was led by God to anoint him as king. Uh, The problem was that Saul was the king actual at that time. And so uh, when Saul heard that David was anointed as king, he became very angry, jealous, and even enraged. Uh, He tried to kill David several times, and uh, David had to uh, run away for his life, Uh, had to practice social distancing even before it was popular. And uh, so he hid in caves. And uh, during the time that he was running away from King Saul, he wrote several psalms. Uh, poetry. He was a poet even back then. And I want to read a few verses out of Psalm 34 because I think it shows that even during a time of great stress in his life, he had a good attitude. He went to God and God ministered to him. The scripture reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's that's a pretty good thing to do. Uh, My soul makes its boast in the Lord let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. All right. Now, uh, if you will, let's, uh, let's pray, and you can lead us today. We want to be sure and remember Deborah Montgomery. She's sure. at MD Anderson. There are others in our church that are hurting, and we just mentioned in yesterday's broadcast that you lost your aunt, so we're yeah. remembering you in prayer as well. Thank you. Appreciate you want to lead that. us? Yes. Our Lord and Savior, you are great and gracious. At all times, you are there. You're providing for us. You're ministering to us. Help us when we have fears, when we have anxieties, when we have concerns to run to you. We know that you will take away those fears. You will allow us to see you high and lifted up. Lord, we do pray for Deborah. We pray that you administer to her as she's at MD Anderson. Pray for Vernon and the rest of the family. Care for them as they seek to serve you. They seek to understand you. They seek to work even through a difficult time in their lives. Lord, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us today, Dr. Charles Scrivener. Uh, before we go, I'm going to tell you a few things. One, we have a winner for our contest. I told you, told you the other day that we would uh, give away a T-shirt to somebody for commenting, liking, sharing. 
Uh, and the winner of that is Amanda Andrews. So congratulations, Amanda. We got a t-shirt for you. You'll be the envy of all the people in your home because nobody else is going to see it on you. <laughs> uh, we also are doing a hashtag on social media so that people can share uh, stories of our church family getting through this together. Hashtag is MHBC together. So if you want to share a picture of your family doing worship together, uh, something that could make a good community story for our podcast, uh, your family participating in any of the children's youth programming that our church is doing, uh, just something that might encourage your fellow church members, just put the hashtag MHBC together. That is it for today's broadcast. Thank you for joining us yet again. It is always a pleasure to be with you. This is MHBC Family Connect. We love our family.